Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room in Rockland, California. Received an email about one of my videos with a few questions, and we'll take a look at that email right after this. Okay, so let's take a look at this email, and uh, I'll go through and I'll read it because it's, it is an interesting question. So here we go. Jose Luis Giordano writes the following. Dear Mr. Heath, I was listening to your video, What is Velocity Factor, by YouTube Elmer Jim Heath W6LG, but I'm not sure I understood. What is the velocity factor for is a coax with a higher velocity factor better or worse? How does it velocity factor affect me in communications and the power of my signal that has a higher or lower velocity factor? I know the theory of transmission lines. I know how the velocity factor appears within the study of transmission line. I know what it depends on. I know how to calculate it, etc. But what I don't know is, what is it for? Do I have to take it into account when I compare or choose between two cables? I would appreciate it if you could explain it to me, because what I'm asking seems to me to be the most important thing, and yet I don't see it explained in any book or YouTube channel. I take this opportunity to thank you for your didactic videos and clear explanations. Thank you so much. Best regards, J. Louis Giordano, CA4GIO, <laughs> PhD in Physics, Master of Science in Physics, and an undergraduate degree in Electronics. Um, yeah, we can talk about that. Uh, it's uh, it is an interesting topic. So. Let's first take a look at whether there's a correlation between uh, velocity factor and loss. And to do that, I've created a, a list of different kinds of cables. It's velocity factor and it's loss at 30 megahertz. So I'll bring that up now. Okay, here are some uh, velocity factors that I got off the internet by searching in Google for various kinds of coax. Uh, let's start with the first one, RG58 foam. Now, by the way, this one had several values, but let's say 0.54 it was the average. And the loss at 30 megahertz, 2.5 dB, so darn near a 50% loss. That's pretty small stuff. Um, RG174, even smaller, that's 0.66 velocity factor. And the loss at uh, 30 megahertz is 5.5 dB bunches. Now let's look at the next one, RG213. Velocity factor, again, 0.66. And the loss at 30 megahertz is 1.1. So that one has a greater velocity factor than RG8 foam, and it has much less loss. Let's go to RG8X. That has 2 dB loss at 30 megahertz with a velocity factor of 0.84. So if you look at the velocity factors and they're arrayed from low to high, uh, the uh, loss in coax is not related to the velocity factor. Um, in fact, if you look at the last four uh, coax cables, which have basically the same velocity factor, the loss at 30 megahertz goes from 2.0 to 0 0.7 dB. So let's go back to uh, Luis's questions, and I'll answer the first one in a minute. And the third question is, um, is a uh, well, the second question is, is a coax with a higher velocity factor better or worse it, it neither how does it affect me uh, i think he's asking about uh, erp and there's no correlation between velocity factor and loss so let's go back to his first question louise you're asking uh, 
what is the velocity factor for? Well, you know is probably better than I do by a lot. Um, electrons in free space move pretty quickly. Um, when they're on a wire, they start to slow down. So if you're using like 18 gauge wire, the velocity factor of that wire might be 95%, 0.95, 0.95. .98, some number like that. Why is it important? Well, if you're making an antenna for a certain wavelength, you have to adjust the um, the length of that based upon its velocity factor. So instead of it being um, 100 feet long, it maybe it needs to be 98 feet long or 95 feet long. If you're using a really large diameter conductor, um, maybe some other uh, uh, number comes into play. Maybe it needs to be uh, a lot shorter compared to the wire antenna. Phasing of uh, antennas, velocity factor is really important. I phased two Yaggies side by side. The Yaggies were for 20 meters and I phased one Yaggie compared to the other and it turned out that relatively short lengths of coax made a big difference in the phasing between the two Yaggies, and I could null out a signal in the pattern. So um, phasing could come into play as you are uh, building an antenna or going to construct an antenna, depending on the kind of wire size. Uh, coax cables, the velocity factor, as we noted, changes a lot. Uh, if you're going to be using them for phasing lines, then you want to know the velocity factor. Uh, another thing too is, let's say um, you have an antenna and you'd like to know kind of, sort of, what is the SWR look like at the antenna. You know that there's maybe some loss in your coax, but what does it look like up here? Well, if you could uh, go a half wavelength uh, from the feed point to an SWR meter, you might be able to get a good idea about what it, uh, the SWR is like at the feed point because you've gone a half a wavelength. Um, if you don't figure velocity factor, that coax is not necessarily going to be a half a wavelength. Maybe it needs to be 0.85 or 0.66. So there again, there's a velocity factor uh, affecting the length of the coax in order to get to half a wavelength. Anything to do with phasing, uh, feed lines, um, matching stubs uh, uh, that are made out of coax, any number of things affect are affected by velocity factor. And it, it may not be mentioned exactly, but it, it's in there uh, uh, almost every time you look at something dealing with an antenna. Luis asks some, uh, some great questions. If you have some questions, um, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Luis, thank you for writing. I'm Jim, W6LG in Rockland, California. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Uh, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Some kind of uh, comment would be great. 73. Bye-bye.